I don't even know what we should title this video. I had a million subscribers. That's it? <laughs> no, we'll think of something else. I was gonna say, I feel like, I feel like just about every, everyone who hit a million subscribers has a video that says, I hit a million subscribers. Content creating for me has always been a thing. I've, all, like I've always created, we had this little VHS camera when I was younger uh, that my dad had this big VHS camera. We would run around and just make goofy, goofy skits. And then growing up, I bought like this high eight, I believe was the tape, this little camera. And it was before YouTube was even around. There was no such thing as uploading your videos online. So we would just make these little sketches. We didn't even know how to edit. We didn't have editing software. So to cut to a different scene, we'd literally hit record, say your line, pause, turn, hit record, pause, and we'd do it just like that. There, there was no cutting. Oh shoot, we're still recording this stuff. Tell me if I'm in the, if I'm in the, ready get up. Let's do that action again. Cool. Start Am I blocking that chair? Yeah, when you're blocking the table actually, it has been, well. We could literally make a whole video and then watch it by ourselves and crack up. And be like, yo, we, we did it, we won. And then we'd move on to the next thing. I, don't, I think when you're, fu when you're funny, I, th I think you don't, you don't really acknowledge it. Like that's the way I feel about it. Not that I was like, oh, I'm a funny guy. I don't feel like I've ever said that. I think it's just people telling you. When people constantly tell you, then you're like, oh, okay, cool. That's funny, you like that? I'll just, I'll do that again. When you're young, you go through that a lot where it's like you do something funny and then people laugh. And when you're a little kid, you're like, oh, they laugh. Let me do it again. And then you quickly realize like, okay, it, the joke's old now. Like you can stop. Ages ago when me and Mark were kids in elementary school, we, were, we wanted to make comic books. You can really see the evolution of his <laughs> artistic styling. Growing up, I would always draw. So me and my brother Mark were always drawing. We used to make comic books. And the comic books, like we would do episode after episode. And again, there was no going viral. We weren't uploading it. We weren't selling these comic books, but we were showing it to our family. We would give them away to our family. So drawing has always been something I've loved to do. Oh. Castle the Nightshot was my, oh. this was my character I made up. Back when he sucked at drawing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man of monkey. Holy cow. That's legit the same character you just showed me. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there he is today. His character. Man of monkey lives on. It's 2021. <laughs> he lives on. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. It's almost like Matt's artwork was actually better than mine back then. And then he goes back in time and apparently he's a caveman and he has the wardrobe. That's why I still have the comic books till this day. That's something I'm proud of. That's comic books I made. Me and Mark were 10, 9, 10, 11, like, and I love it. I'll let people read those now. And now with drawing these little stick figure characters in such an ugly way and people liking it, coupled with making videos, something I love to do, something I've always done. Those are my two greatest things that I love doing and people happen to like it. So I'm like, this is amazing. What brought you out to LA? What was your motivation out here? What was sustaining you out here? It was literally a last second thing. I told my brother Mark, I was like, hey man, I like, I have this extra money saved up. And I was like, let's just move to LA. If we're gonna do it, like we have to do it now. Today is June 18th, 2015. And I am sitting in my car. I'm doing background on this TV show called Love. I don't like the way they talk to background people. So I will not be doing this too long. And then when I'm in a position where I need background people, I'm gonna treat them right. Years ago, I believe it was like 2016, me, my friends Cornell, Pat D. Lucky, Jalen, like we're all running around North Hollywood filming for Instagram. And we kept trying to make content. And then we're like, yo, there's content creators who are making money on YouTube. So we felt this like push, like, okay, we should start merging over to YouTube. And we had these talks in 2016. You know, my friend Cornell, like I think he hit a million subscribers, I wanna say in like 2019. And it, it like showed me like, yo, it's real. He literally let me work for him. So I'm filming with him the whole time. He's encouraging me like, hey bro, like keep creating cause you're gonna be there. Like, he's like, yeah, you'll be making a living off YouTube in no time. What's up you guys? Just wanted to pop in real quick on a, on a serious note amid all this whole coronavirus stuff going on. 
Um, obviously, it's, it's got morale extremely low everywhere. Um, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to say as a comedian and a content creator with somewhat of an audience, I feel a huge personal responsibility to try to lift people's spirits um, and morale. So I'm going to do my best to try to upload some more, you know, funny material. I'm going to try to keep you guys, you know, boosted with laughter as best I can. If you guys come across some funny memes, send them to me because I want to laugh too. What you guys see, I'm the face of whatever, but like, no, I have a solid team behind me. Obviously, I got my wife, my rock, holding me down, like, covered all the bills when I was like, trying to make content. I'm running and meeting up with friends to film. Meanwhile, she's going to work, believing in me, letting me drive her car, letting me drop her off at work so I can go film. You know what I mean? That's a solid person. There's been plenty of times, especially on my YouTube journey, there's been times where I had like 100 subscribers, and I would be out, my wife would be working, she worked the late shift working at a call center, and she lets me borrow her car so I could drive around LA and Postmate and deliver people food, and I'd be driving, putting miles on the car, and then at the end of the day, I might make $70. Then I would go back home, and I'd be like, I have to make a sketch. So I would film a video, I'd write a script, I'd film it, I'd edit the entire thing, and I'd see the sun come up. It really is a sacrifice. You are sacrificing your time, your energy, your sleep, and you just have to have that confidence in yourself of knowing like what you feel is right. Where we are now with what we're doing, being able to, to make these uh, videos and do this animation and coming from doing our comic books uh, when we were younger, like it's awesome. So for anybody I can say that is trying to make content and trying to, to grow their subscribers or whatever, like. You have to have that dog in you, that fight, like to fight through all the challenges. You know, Marcus had his challenges. I've had my challenges. Days where you're just upset, you're crying, you feel like you're not gonna make it. You have to fight and you have to make that happen. So you have to say, I will make it happen no matter what. So you have to have that fight in you, that mentality. It doesn't matter what anyone says. It doesn't matter who says no. You make it happen. And you have to believe in yourself more than anybody will because you're the star of your story. So, with us being able to work together, this is what we wanted. We got Creation's Comics. 